Hi, I'm Femi OK and you're in the stream. Today, as calls for a referendum about the monarchy grow, is Spain really ready to become a republic? This is a classic debate, monarchists versus republicans. Malika Bilal, digital producer of The Stream, what are you finding online for this debate? Our community loves classic debates, right. and so they pitched this show. We actually got nice. a request for this on Facebook, so our thanks to Aaliyah for that. Now, as soon as the news break, the internet exploded with memes. Most of them were critical. Uh, they look a little something like this. And this one says in Spanish, first Spaniard to get out of unemployment, and it's poking fun because the picture you see here is Prince Felipe. Now, of course, we can't have this conversation without you. So whether you're critical or supportive of the monarchy, we want to hear from you. Use the hashtag AJStream. Oh, he's come to the studio so prepared. Journalist Gustav Allegre. He is a Catalonian journalist and he is here with us. He's also a US, US correspondent for Catalan Radio and spent more than 10 years in Spain as a journalist. Great to have you here. Thank you. We'll hear more from you in just a moment. Absolutely. I have to tell the audience, though, that the stream, well, it is your show. Tell us what stories you think the world isn't paying enough attention to and we can remedy it. Check us out at Google Plus and let us know what you want to see on the show. You can scoot down here to see some of the stories we are following and if you don't like any of them or you like some of them, you have more to add, then just go on to Google Plus. Right now, let's check out some of the hashtags that you're following. of down with the king continue to grow in Spain as thousands call for a referendum to bring about a republic. Now many of you King Juan Carlos's June the 2nd abdication to his son Felipe as a window of opportunity to rid the country of its constitutional monarchy. In power since dictator Francisco Franco's death in 1975, the king was lauded for ushering in democracy. But in recent years, the royals have lost popularity due to a number of family scandals. Many Spaniards feel disillusioned with the extravagant lifestyle of the royals while they suffer through economic hardships, including youth unemployment, which right about now is around about 50%. So as protests spread across Spain, what's the game from putting an end to the monarchy? Joining us via Skype to talk about this, we have Louis Dean Valencia. He's involved in the protests calling for a referendum. He's also a PhD student at Fordham University. Alberto Nunes Lauf is a supporter of the Spanish monarchy. And Marta Herrero Maestro is a journalist in Spain. So I have to say welcome to the stream. And it's great to have you all here. Hola todos. So let me start back here on my laptop. You're very generous there with that little laughter. Let me start back here on my laptop. I have a map of Spanish protests that broke out after the king announced that he was abdicating. Marta, you've been to some of these protests. The last one you went to, what is the atmosphere like? Tell us a couple of stories. Well, I've been, co I've been covering the last two protests against the monarchy, asking for a referendum, and uh, you can feel the spirit of the people mm. needing a change, a big change. Not only in the monarchy, I think it's uh, a result of a uh, whole institutional crisis, including the monarchy, polit political parties, institutions that are being questioned by the citizens and um, people asking for the, the right to vote, to make their own de decisions because they're quite disappointed and they lost faith and trust in the political parties that are representing them. So this is just an extension of what the whole feeling is in Spain right now. Gasta. Referendums, it's in democracies on an international level, the normal procedure. So that's the point here. What is at stake right now, it's if the Spanish democracy, it's allowing the people to vote and to decide about their future. That is what the people are going to take the streets mm -hmm. asking for democracy. We have to bear in mind that 60% of the current population in Spain were born 
after the transition to democracy. So after 1975, so you've got a quite a, a, so a young population. Exactly. So they were not direct witness of the role mm -hmm. right. of the king in the transition. So that's one of the main points where the king built his reputation in the throne. Right. So these people are now asking to vote, to decide in the referendum. Sure. This is what is at stake. What is at stake right now, it's democracy. Well, it's interesting you said that, Gustav, because we actually just got this tweet from Jake. He says, I lived in Spain as a child, and I remember Franco's death. Juan Carlos's wisdom and stability helped Spain transition to democracy. But, Louis, as Gustav mentioned, this is the people out in the streets, our generation, that don't remember the time that this person who tweeted in do. So what is the view that they have? I think that a lot of people have the view that, just like, uh, say, the older generation looked at Franco and asked, why is this person our leader in the 70s? People today are asking, why is this um, king our head of state? If we actually live in a democracy, should it be a democracy that we decide on? And that was not a decision that was ever made for us. Or that was a decision that was made for us. So, Alberto, what do you make of these protests that seem to spring up from nowhere as a, somebody who's a supporter of the, of the royal family? What do you make of what's happening in Spain right now? Well, I, I do believe um, that there there is a, and people are upset, uh, extremely so, and this all well, it all sparked in 2012, when the king went to the Botswana hunting, and throughout 2012, also other things were discovered. So let's, let's just let's just remind our audience what, what happened there. So just sure. to re retell the story because he, he went on kind of. A big holiday basically <laughs> right in the midst of a crisis yes all right so in, in the midst of a crisis yeah. he did he did go to uh, Botswana hunt to hunt elephants which uh, caused one of the social me uh, media questions that uh, I saw on your um, on your Twitter account which yeah. was uh, how disconnected is uh, Spain's royal family from realities on the ground now uh, if in the past there was no contact with reality, no reality check for them. They were, they, they are royalty. Uh, the moment that sparked, social media created an outrage about this. And the King Juan Carlos was the first political figure in Spain to go public on, you know, apologizing. I have done wrong. I won't allow this to happen again. I feel, for, I understand why you are upset and why you are angry and outraged about this yeah okay apologizing okay. doesn't mean that uh, it was not a big mistake but if you take into consideration also that there is a general discredit of the spanish institutions like from the judiciary system where the president of the supreme court had to resign because of misappropriation of public money or the business association where the main association in madrid the president had to resign because of a tax fraud or the parliament or the big parties like the people's party who is running the country right now it's under investigation because so using money from donations as a kickbacks and also to paying in cash to the team leaders and among these team leaders is the president of the country if you have all of this now you understand why people are taking to the streets uh. and are putting the name of spain under under question Louis, what did you want to add? I think um, another thing to consider is that it's not just about what the king has done recently or hasn't done recently, for that matter. Mm. It's a question of a fundamental look at the way that the system is built. And I think that that's a more important question. Is, what okay, do you we mean do by how the system, system is built? Because for my understanding of constitutional monarchy is that you have the head of state, but he's politically, he's not in charge of anything, or is he? That's right. But that's yeah. the thing is, uh, uh, what role does a uh, head of state have? Well, they mm. represent the country, for one. Right. And I think that would be a thing that you would want to have um, under a vote. Who represents you? That's a fundamental yeah. sort of question. Right? Right. Who represents your country? All right. There's something that goes. Yeah, go ahead, I Martin. would like to highlight something. I mean, uh, uh, a monarchy was imposed by General Franco. 
and uh, we were sold by the media an ideal uh, transition from dictatorship to, to democracy. And um, that idea, we all believed that it was the correct thing to do in that moment, but it was not so ideal. And we, won't, we don't have to forget, he was imposed by a dictator. Absolutely. And now his son, his, his son is going to inherit. I mean, there's no democracy in between the whole process. Uh, okay, uh, and citizens other, won't be able to that, choose. That is, the, the head. that is correct. There, the, he was uh, chosen by General Franco to take over his place. But uh, you might recall that uh, fascists that still live today call him uh, the king who broke his promise. He did promise to, keep, to upkeep the, the rules of his fascist regime and he broke that promise to give us that democracy. Right now there are many fascists out there. Most of them are not anymore. <laughs> they have passed away. I'm, I'm not going to go in a political there. fight. It was, it's just an issue to explain to the audience that they might not don't understand where this uh, monarchy is coming from, what the procedure was. I mean, I'm not going to go into a political fight, small fights about fascists or other regimes. I'm just telling the I, whole story. I do story believe it's an important process. fight to, to mention because we were in a fascist regime. And I think that actually is a really good point, because if you're talking about a fascist regime, okay, well, what's the better option? If we have a fascist regime or a constitutional monarchy, okay, I'll go with the constitutional monarchy because that is actually better than a fascist regime. Mm -hmm. But whenever you're trying to think about, okay, what other options are there? Okay, right. there's a republic. Okay, that should be another idea because we've had republics in Spain before. Exploring options. Let me just explore the option of going to the community. <laughs> Malika? I think that's a good option. Um, so of course this is a conversation that's happening in Spain in Spanish. So we've translated this tweet for our audience. Uh, Fernando writes in, Spain is torn between regeneration and or maintaining the status quo in various areas. The abdication tries to reconcile both of those things. So Gustav, picking up on that, uh, we also got this tweet that this kind of references something that Alberto mentioned a little bit earlier is the monarchy truly in touch with the current problems facing Spain's people do you believe that they're in touch I really think that the uh, Prince Felipe is uh, well educated he's a uh, um, uh, person who is smart I think he has not the same people skills as his father and in my opinion he is a new face of the old establishment Mm. Uh, remember that here where what we are talking about it's the right to decide are the people allowed to vote so it's it's what is at stake right now it's the, the quality of the Spanish democracy so we understand that history was as, as it was I mean we cannot change the history but we can change the future Gustav, and this is what what the people who are taking to the streets are asking Gustav, but we're talking about the head of state, the person or the people who represent Spain as a country, they as a constitutional monarchy do not affect the democracy in terms of the political process. So why is that top level, why is that so incredibly important? Who represents you and being able to vote them in and vote them out? Because the monarchy represents the system, the establishment. Right. And people have lost the confidence, the people have lost the confidence in the system. And the main I figure in the main figure of the of this establishment is the is the monarchy and below the monarchy is the government and mm -hmm. below the government is the parliament and then the judiciary system and you can go all the way down until the lowest level of the administration right. and you will see corruption widespread uh, political parties that are uh, friends with businessmen doing business for that happens own. in republics as, as well of course uh, Alberto what did you want to add sure um, I I do believe Gost, uh, Gustav has a, um, has a, is right uh, on what he says, but I think it would be an incredibly big mistake if with the current system we allowed a president of the republic to take over the position of our head of state. Right now we do have a democracy, but it's a particracy. It belong, we do not vote for the people, we vote for the party, and the party uh, elects who's going to become chief of government or prime minister. So we don't really want the party who has been subverted, that has been, you know, uh, has received bribes 
and these are being investigated at the moment and in the past to also have the head of state. We have already uh, had so French, uh, French uh, Republican, uh, you know, uh, French Republican presidents leave at the same time, the uh, monarchy, their post so to go straight into a police car. Louis, hold tight for a moment. Um, Alberto, have, have you finished making that point? Because Louis, I know Absolutely. is... Absolutely. Okay, Louis, go ahead. Also, uh, the monarchy is under investigation as it is. The, uh, the king's own daughter is suspected of corruption. It's not as though you can say that this corruption is free from the monarchy. Yes, corruption exists. Louis, why have got... But they are right. different investigations. They don't come from a political party. I right. think we're losing the point of the whole debate. Agreed. I think uh, even a president of a republic, a president of the government, prime minister, could be alleged of charges of corruption. But we are talking about here is the, the, the vote, the people deciding and voting. The, the right to decide. Here is what is at the center That's of the it. debate. That's what we're talking about. And in, the, in democracies, at in, on international level, referendums are the normal procedure. All right, so guests, take a, take a pause for a moment. I've got two I've got two petitions here on my laptops. So I've got one from avas.org, which is referendum now. So there's that one. There's another one from change.org, citizen referendum on the continuation of the monarchy. So, Louis, if we're mm -hmm. looking at how does this even happen? What's the plan? What's the strategy? You've been agitating for there to be a referendum, but what's the actual plan? How, how, is, how will it actually happen, if it happens? Well, for one, I'm, I'm probably not, yes, I have been involved in the movement, but I don't speak for the movement. The movement speaks for itself. And so... So what's the movement saying say, then, Louis? The movement says that we have to start getting names of people who are wanting to set up tables across the country and call for a referendum, a popular referendum and go into neighborhoods, go into neighborhoods and create assemblies and have people go there and talk about what would the best options be uh, for a new sort of government model. What do, you think, not what do you think the options might be? I think that some of the options might be trying in some way to have more voice for the people. Um, as much as some a monarchist might say, the king gave us democracy, as we all know, Whenever you install a democracy, look at almost anywhere in the world that that's worked. Never. Mm -hmm. It comes from the people. A, mon a democracy comes from people. It's not something installed from the top down. Malika. Well, Marta, I actually like, like you to have a listen to this video comment because, of course, you're a journalist there and you're speaking to the people, uh, the very people who we're talking about, these people who are out there on the street. So I'd like you to have a listen to this and, and see if you can answer his question. King Juan Carlos I dictator Franco's successor has resigned while the country is going through a dramatic situation. Some of us believe this is the right time to ask ourselves a lot of questions, including do we really want to be a monarchy? For me, this is part of a bigger process, uh, one about the right to choose. And this process will no doubt end up in a profound political change in Southern Europe. So Martha, he says this is really just about the right to choose. Is that the same thing that you're hearing from protesters? Yeah, sure, sure. What well, people want is to be heard. I mean, those, they have no right to choose the, the head of state or the model of state they're living in. And so, yeah, that's the main goal here, the main thing. Marta, when is the coronation of uh, Felipe, Prince Felipe? Um, the um, abdication takes place on June... 18th and uh, the proclamation, there's no coronation, will right. be uh, June 19th. Okay, so it, 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 are we talking about the protests just having 10 days in order to get some momentum or will the protests continue beyond then? You've been out and about reporting on them. Are you sensing that there's a sense of we have to hurry up or will they continue even when there is King Felipe, Marta? Well, ah, I think they will continue. They are mm. programmed for Wednesday. There's another one. Uh, once the abdication law is going to be passed to the Congress and approved there, they've got another demonstration then. And I think these voices are, will be increasing because this is not something isolated once the abdication took place. After the European elections, there were many anti-monarchist parties that won 20% of the votes. So, I mean, there's going to be maybe a parliamentary re representation bigger than the, the actual 
in 2015 that might ask for this referendum. I don't know, maybe the coalition of parties, but this is something that has been increasing, been increasing during the last months. I mean, so I don't think they will, they will stop. They won't stop. I, I think and that also it is. Oh, um, go ahead. It is. Go go. It is. Oh, okay. It is something that you can say that to some effect, to some um, effect, it's meant to be a long process. You don't want it to be something that's decided overnight. You don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Uh, that's actually one of the good things about conservative ideas is you're looking at what was working, but also you don't want to stagnate. And I think that this process of debate is good because it allows for people to think about what other options are there. It, the movement's taking advantage of right. this particular historical moment, Okay. yes, to get attention sure. for it. But apart uh, but from that, you're going to carry yeah. on. All right, let, let me just take a quick break and head across the community because we're almost out of time for this part of the show. We're talking oh about what other options. Oh <laughs> oh I know that's right. how I feel every day. <laughs> well, one of our guests just mentioned looking at what other options are out there. So, Gustav, okay. we actually got this tweet in just a couple minutes ago. Juan says, "In Spain, there are Republican parties which ask for a referendum. How many people vote for those parties, and isn't that democracy?" Well, it is. It's That's democracy. Correct. Exactly. It's democracy. And people, uh, if you want to change the system, you can do it so. But look, these figures. Today, there was a, a poll published in the largest newspaper in Spain mm -hmm. asking for the monarchy with Felipe or another public relevant figure. Like it's a kind of question saying, well, a republic. OK, just 49 percent of the people were in favor of the monarchy with the Felipe as a king. The Just forty nine percent is half of Spain of well, those that were polled. Yeah, but uh, you can't what say happened? that's just forty nine percent. Okay. No, it's quite a lot. Alberto. Are we kidding? We agree. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> what about the other half? Thirty six. Thirty six percent wanted our republic. I mean, we're not. We're not. We're not fighting. We're not fighting. Okay, we're just giving the figures of this poll. Okay, here are the and figures. If if, the, if a referendum was to take place, it would have to have the backing of the Congress, give those votes to those of Republican course. parties, and then that would make a case. But right now, people are heated, people are impoverished, people are hungry, and people see this as a chance to go out and strike and bark at the wrong uh, tree. I don't this agree. This is not I correct. Well, this is assuming that there people are, are many, stupid. Uh, there are many other no. things that need no. fixing. And for example, Podemos, also the monarchy. Podemos also has the monarchy. a very clear, has a very clear agenda, which I believe in certain in some of its points people, people is don't really know what positive. Is, okay, the so know Alberta, and Marta, and Louis, and Gustav, we haven't even got halfway through yet, but we do have a post show, so you'll be relieved. Take a breath. We will come back to you at stream.outazero.com. Something very interesting that Gustav brought with him. And I put it on my laptop just to end this part of the conversation. So here's 1996 and seven out of 10 Spanish Spaniards were monarchists. And then we go to 2014 and then we've got three out of 10 Spaniards being monarchist. But interesting. That but is going to stream.outazero.com, the post show dot 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 meanwhile let me tell you what we're doing tomorrow well i am off i am taking a day off but josh rushing will be joining malika in the stream and uh what will you be talking about we will be talking about canada actually mm. a temporary foreign workers program allegations of exploitation we'll look into those all right i will tweet in is that okay i will look for your tweet all right hashtag aj stream <laughs> at femi okay my twitter handle I, I know I well. will look at the bottom of the screen to see if my tweet makes it. <laughs> no pressure. We are going to the post show right now at stream.adazero.com. If you want to talk about Spain, could it be a republic? Hashtag AJ Stream. See you online. Thanks for watching.
Thank goodness we have a post show. Welcome back to the streamed online post show. We are carrying on our discussion about calls for an end to Spain's monarchy. Still with us, we have Gustav Alegre. He's a Catalan journalist. Louis Dean Valencia, he's part of the movement calling for a referendum. Albert Nonas Lauf is a monarchy supporter. Marta Herrera Maestro is a Spanish journalist. So great to have you all back here with us. Wasn't that the fastest 30 minutes in your life, guess? What happened? <laughs> Wham! Okay, it's all right. We have some more time. We do, luckily. Malia. Because um, the community actually wants to talk about what the monarchy, uh, what it can do to affect the economy, and whether or not there's a, a, any effect of, on it at all. So Ashwin tweets in, the state of the country's economy leads to the general population needing someone to blame. And in this case, it happens to be the monarchy. Now, there's on the other side, there's this tweet from Alex who says, it's not King Juan Carlos's fault that Spain's economy is in the toilet. He says, mm -hmm. uh, and and that uh, there's allegations of corruption, and his daughter Christina and her husband did shady things. This person alleges. Um, but Louis, I'd like to go to you with that, and and whether or not this will have an effect on the economy at all. Um, immediately, no, absolutely not. But one thing that you also would have to think about is if we're going to talk about a different type of democracy, that does have more broader effects, and economies uh, change over time. Yes, um, this will be something that doesn't actually change anything immediately. If there were no king uh, tomorrow, things would not I change agree. overnight. I agree. But I, would, I couldn't agree. <laughs> well, I do. I mean, uh, the, the end of the crisis will be dropping the unemployment rate below 10%. And I don't think no monarchy or, or republic could ever do that. Okay, so I mean, right. that's something that's clear. I mean, it can and be a good... Spain's brand to export as a PR, but I mean, it could clean up uh, the king's uh, image all over the world, but it would never, it would never end up the crisis or improve it at all. I mean, I don't think it has nothing to do personally. Alberto? And it's also... Oh, I, I do believe it's, uh, he, uh, the, the king's position is that as head of state to, and king, to open those bridges for new uh, e economical and working options. Uh, companies going into other countries uh, tend to go by the king's hand when those markets are opened. In the Why same, in the same way, uh, we, we, have, uh, Mexi uh, we have the he Mexican had the president. Chance. He had the chance to do it. Why did he, didn't Juan Carlos do it then? All those bridges. I mean, this, this crisis has been ongoing for those years. Those bridges have been built in, ma in many ways. Right now, uh -huh. for example, uh, we have They're our... Creating an, an, are they creating jobs? As far as I know, they are trying their best too. Oh, okay. And a actually, what it's what, for example, the Mexican president was here for. Seventy uh, Mexican companies are working in Spain, providing jobs to the unemployed. And part of the part of it might be because the pre uh, the King Juan Carlos has kept contact with our Latin American brothers. <laughs> Yeah, but Alberto, also uh, the president of the uh, Republic would have done so. I mean, we th maybe we, you, you can thank the king to, to do so, but that doesn't allow people to request Absolutely. a referendum about a republic or a monarchy. Because uh, what we are talking about is the right to decide. Here, sure, this but is that right what to decide must be backed by your adult decision when you go to vote. And who decides if I am an adult? Vote. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. No, who, you, you, you decide adult. You have been who an adult is adult for ages. and, you and people who, yeah. Spa Spaniards have not been voting for the Republican option. Otherwise the the king wouldn't have the backing of ninety percent of congressional seats at the moment. You are not voting for the Republican option. Why aren't you doing that? Okay, Alberto, one thing. If this application had been made in 2015, were there general elections, do you think it would have been the same? It would have been supported by the, all the political parties in the Congress? With uh, Rubalcaba in the Socialist Party? I do believe so. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the actual situation, the Socialist Party being as it is. Rubalcaba didn't resign because now we know. Well, Marta, I think, Marta, I think it's important to understand what happened in the yeah. recent European elections. So yeah, sure. the results of the, Euro the recent European ele elections uh, shows that the Spanish, Spain's long-standing bi-party political system is under threat. 
So the abdication of um, King Juan Carlos was strategic, understanding that he's facing pro health problems, c corruption cases, and uh, the results of the elections are showing a future where the bipartisan system in Spain is under threat, and uh, the people are taking the streets, uh, taking to the streets. So it's all of these that at force, and also of, uh, force. Of the monarchist parties mm. gaining gaining voice. I mean, we have to take that. But let me remember that here, what we are talking about is the right to the side in democracies. So at on an international level referendums are the normal procedure why spaniards or catalans are not allowed to vote it mm. there has been referendums since 1990 in quebec in bosnia and herzegovina in montenegro in uh, ukraine there's going to be one in scotland in september 18 why catalans can vote why spaniards can vote well gustav i actually it's I, not I love a that critical you, you brought decision. that up i want to pick up on what gustav just said because our, our community is asking what effect could the end of the monarchy potentially have on uh, the aspirations for independence for the basque region we see this tweet here what impact on uh, the basque region and another person wants to know about the Catalanian, Catalanian people, Pau says, I prefer an elected, accountable Catalan president rather than a hereditary, non-transparent, unaccountable Spanish king. What potential effect could this have? Well, it's democracy. It's the quality of the democracy. The Catalan movement, it's supported by 75% of the Catalan population. It's a bottom-up movement. It's democratic-based. It has support across social economic lines, and it's moving a lot of people to the streets to taking to the streets asking for the referendum catalans want to vote catalans want to vote in a very permanent consistent and a democratic way even desmond tutu the uh, no novel uh, laureated priest uh, uh, recently says that spain should allow catalonia to vote in a free a democratic referendum. Even Margaret Thatcher, one of the most conservative uh, politicians in European uh, history, say so about the, Sc calling the her, Scotland. Calling her, calling Men. Margaret Thatcher conservative is an understatement by any means. She was a supporter of a <laughs> dictator, if you remember correctly. Oh, come on. Now you are seeing Margaret Thatcher as a supporter of a dictator and now when we talk about the king juan carlos who was appointed by a, <laughs> another dictator a king not who a dictator come on. Well, who is i think i think state, you should be more consistent not a general all right so guess let's let's let's, let's be uh, realistic here let's let's get from the hypothetical and, and calling out the big gun names and be very very realistic in the next six months louis what do you think is going to happen in spain regarding this monarchy republican question well, I think that this is going to have to go to a referendum. If we're Why? Saying Why that would it have to? All right. Well, if we're saying that 49% of people do not support the monarchy, that means that it's an important question, right? This is one of the big questions. And so... I thought it was 49% did support the monarchy and 36% did support the monarchy. Did support the monarchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, All right. So if 49% uh, do support the monarchy, that yeah. means that it's a question that's important. And also, it means that it's something that we need to start uh, thinking about and okay. trying to approach. All right, so we have one minute and three guests. This should be interesting. Marta, what do you think is going to happen in the next six months in Spain? What does your next gut, your reporter's months. gut tell you? Well, uh, the thing is that we have to face a challenge of the um, um, uh, Catalans uh, referendum, November mm -hmm. 9th. Uh, that's, m I think it's quite more yep. important and it's more liable to take place than the referendum for, for our, our um, monarchy or, right. or our republic. So sure. I think, I mean, this is going to keep on going. This feeling is going to keep on going. And I wanted to say is that in general, Spaniards need to be heard. Okay, that's the yeah. general idea right now. They want to be heard and they want to express their opinion okay. of what they want to decide. All, right. All over. It's a nationwide. question of a representative democracy. All right, I, really I hear that. And we've made that point so clearly. Gustav, uh, next six months, what do you think it would be like? When you have a popular uh, democratic base and uh, with the support across social economic uh, lines uh -huh. like in Catalonia what I expect is the Spanish democracy would allow Catalans to vote because Catalans want to vote. Alberto, our royalist, are you optimistic?
optimistic or pessimistic about the future of the Spanish royal family? I am very optimistic. There's, I don't believe there's going to be a referendum, but I do believe people will be smart enough to keep their discomfort with the political parties to uh, wait till 2016 and make their voices be heard. Mm -hmm. There are changes that need to be made. Uh -huh. Our state deserves a lot of renewal and a lot of work and that's going to happen from 2016 onwards. We just have to keep it together and it's going to happen and lots of changes are upcoming. By the way, I just wanted to add one thing. Uh, the first question you made about who would you like to have in your uh, who would you, at home Who would you like dinner? to have to dinner from the royal family was how we started the, the pre-show 40 minutes you know, ago. The yes. The, the <laughs> royal family can't be doing it that wrong if none of our guests Said, said you would never have would them. Yeah. The, yeah, that they would, would have them for dinner. <laughs> Good point. I love that. Alberto, Marta, Louis, Gaston. It was wonderful enjoying Spanish style debate. Thank you so much. Now, I am away tomorrow, but Josh Rushing will be joining Malika in the stream mm -hmm. to discuss what topic? We'll be looking at, at Canada and their temporary foreign workers program. Okay. Uh, there's been allegations of exploitation, right. workers' rights being abused, so we'll look into all of those. Good story. Mm -hmm. I will be watching the podcast. We are done for now, but we will always be online. See you there. Thanks for watching.